So have you heard that saying that it's going to get worse before it gets better and that you're going through some kind of healing crisis and it's normal to actually feel worse after you go through a kind of healing process? Well, I'm here to break that myth up because that's what it is. It's a myth. It's not true in many cases. And in this video, I'm going to explain when it actually is applicable, but when it's mostly not applicable and it's not true and what you can actually do to actually navigate this process so that you're not suffering so much and not expecting things to go terrible if you're, if you're about to face a healing process. Okay, so let's get into it. So first of all, I want to address when it is actually applicable. So in the case of drug addictions, alcoholism, uh, behavioral addictions, shopping addictions, uh, toxic food and food addictions, any of those, those behaviors that are involve a strong chemical disruption to the body, whether you're putting in a strong chemical into the system or just disrupting the chemistry in such a way, that when you remove that input, such as a drug, is that yes, the body will go into a kind of intense recalibration process, which usually involves a lot of suffering, right? Many days of, you know, hot flushes, insomnia, other typical ones, depending on the drug and, and everything like that. But Yes, the body goes through a recalibration process because the chemistry is now running on a deficiency. And so the body has to recalibrate and learn how to create its own chemistry uh, to recalibrate itself. So in those cases, when we're talking about strong chemistry, we're talking about the body in particular, there is a sort of a kickback effect, right? But when we're talking about psychological uh, dimensions, we're talking about emotional dimensions, we're talking about spiritual dimensions and even energetic dimensions, it's simply not true. The main reason is because if it, I'll give you a metaphor to help explain it. So as we grow, we experience various traumatic events. Everyone experiences trauma in some shape or form, right? Life is difficult, right? Life is full of challenges. It's normal. Everyone gets challenged. But what tends to happen with us is that we, we accumulate the stress and it gets stored in the system. So the brain tends to record stress because it's kind of a protection mechanism so that it'll keep us alert for next time. So the brain loves to store trauma, right? It loves to store stress because it's, again, trying to actually help us, but, you know, it causes us problems. So whenever I experience a strong emotional experience, particularly a negative emotional experience, and if I don't process it in a healthy way, I store it. So I'll store it in the body, store it somewhere. And so the metaphor is that we pick up rocks and we put it in this backpack. So as we're children, we've got a very light backpack, right? But, you know, if I've got a traumatic childhood, I've probably put a lot more rocks in there than somebody else who maybe doesn't have such an intense childhood. But all of us, regardless of the circumstances, accumulate stress, right? And so by the time we hit 30, 40, 50 years old, we've got backpacks full of rocks, right? We've been too busy to address them. You know, there's too many things, you know, overwhelmed by how many rocks are in the bag now, right? So now when we come to like a healing process, if we want to address these rocks in the backpack, particularly with EFT, right, which is what I focus on mainly, what we're doing with EFT is we're actually pulling a rock out of the, out of the backpack and we are uh, processing it, whether that means putting the rock aside or uh, dissolving the rock, right? Turning into dust, right? So that's what we're doing with EFT. We get a trauma or we got stress from the past, we turn it into dust and it lightens the load. So if that's the case, then where is this healing crisis that's supposed to come on after I've dissolved the rock, right? 
That's why it's not applicable. It's not true. Because if you really let go of something stressful inside your system, why would that, why would that generate a negative response in my system? It's simply not true. The way that it could be mistaken for this healing crisis, there's two, there's two obvious ones. The first one is that when I pull the rock out and I'm processing it, is that I'm, res and I, I'm actually resisting letting the rock dissolve. Some usually subconsciously is that we don't want to let it go. So we just keep focusing on it. There's some, some way that we are resisting actually processing the rock. Right? Maybe it's a strong identity, like a diagnosis or some kind of memory or some kind of trauma that you're so strongly identified with is that even when you're doing tapping secretly, you're, you don't want to let it go. So the resistance to actually processing this rock and letting it go creates more suffering. Right? It makes you tear up. It makes you struggle. It makes you so much pain resistant. It's the resistance to actually processing the rock because if you actually let go of the rock, afterwards there's actually no there's no stress associated with afterwards right now there's many reasons why someone what doesn't want to process a rock or like i said it could be a really strong identity another f aspect is that there's a fear of an unknown space like if i get rid of this really traumatic memory or identity who am i without that memory right and so that's very fearful for a lot of people. So deep down, they don't want to let it go because it means becoming unknown. And the unknown is more frightful, can be, than actually keeping the suffering that you know. Right? So that's one case where it may be mistaken that you're going through a healing process and that, that's why you feel so bad when you're trying to work on it. But it's just resistance to actually letting it go. That's the suffering. It's not the letting go. It's not the healing, right? So that's the first one. The second one is probably more common. And this is when, okay, so they've taken a rock out. You focused on it. You've actually dissolved the rock. And now your backpack is much lighter, right? You feel better. You feel calmer. You feel lighter. And now you're a different person. You're a slightly different person and often you feel different. You can't quite put your finger on it, but on some deep level, you know, something feels different inside, right? So now you're a different person and then you go back into the lifestyle, which you were living before when you had the rock in your back. So you go back to the same house, you go back to the same job. You're around the same people that you were before, but now everything feels a bit different, right? It doesn't quite hit the same, right? The things you were into before, you're not quite into them anymore. You've got things are shifting inside. So that's actually a good sign, right? That it's a little bit disorientating is the right word. That's a sign that there's some shift inside. And so if you, so as you move into that world and then you find different struggles, like now you've got an anxiety or worry about this and that, it's a separate issue. It's just the way that you are responding to the new life or the new you in this, in this world. That's a separate area which you can tap on and process in a different way. But it's not as a consequence of dissolving the rock. Dissolving the rock is one issue. You've cleared that. Now you're a different person. You're going into the world and now facing other issues that are coming up it's not a natural consequence of that, right? You can actually go back in, some people go back into their lifestyle and they adjust to it well and they make changes and it's easy, you know, well, it's, it feels uh, smoother for those people, but then other people go back to the, the life and then they, they resist it and they cause suffering. So it's the way that people are responding to their new you or the new life is completely individual. And it's not this idea or this myth that that's just what's going to happen because it's a healing crisis. Every time you heal, you're going to have a healing crisis. It's not true at all. Again, if you use the metaphor that you're just removing rocks out of your backpack and dissolving them, you feel better. You feel lighter. So that's actually the, if, if you feel lighter, if you feel calmer, if you feel more peaceful, 
that's the healing process. That's a sign of actually healing. There is no crisis on the end of that. So instead of expecting things to get worse or saying that thing, which I think is a terrible thing to say to people, is that you may feel better, right? <laughs> you'll feel lighter, you'll feel calmer when you go through this process. And that's natural. And of course, if you come up against new anxieties, we can focus on that. So that's my debunking of this idea that it gets worse before it gets better because it's simply not true. And uh, hopefully it's helpful. Let me know in the comments below if that was helpful. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.